All right, and we are going to hear from you, but we're also going to hear from our doctor. The vet is in. Dr. Mike Mossop is joining us right now to take your questions. Good morning, doctor. Hi. How are you guys? We're great. How you doing? We're well, thanks. I'm doing well. Thanks very much for having me. I'm Thank sure you. you are inundated mm -hmm. with questions right now, right? Everything from how do I groom my dog to, you know, when it comes to physical distancing, walks in the park. What has been the most prominent question, the most asked? Yeah, so I, I mean, a lot of it is really just how do I get access to veterinary care, right? Um, obviously, everybody uh, has had to change how things are operating these days, and veterinary clinics are, are part of that. Um, we've had to adapt our own uh, processes as well. So, uh, really, that's the big one. Okay, so speaking of, it's telehealth for pets, and it's called treatwellpetcare.ca. So, how does that work? Is it a phone call question? Is it a video? Yeah, so that's that's actually our regular practice, and we run a membership-based in-home veterinary service in Ottawa. Uh, we do a lot of telemedicine, both before the pandemic, and uh, we've certainly ramped that up currently. There's also uh, something called Cabo Health, and uh, that's an initiative that was running in April. It was started by a company called Cabo, who make uh, fresh uh, dog food from human-grade ingredients. They arrange for home delivery, and uh, they have asked us to kind of come in and help them field some of those phone calls and get that initiative up and running. And they've managed to connect hundreds of Canadian pet parents with free telehealth calls through this. It's amazing. Speaking so, of. yeah, we'll get some of these uh, questions that our viewers have. We're going to start with Karen. It's an email. And she said, can a groomer get COVID-19 from dogs? The owners aren't coming in. They're going to be passed uh, on a leash outside. So uh, she's concerned about that. Yeah, so, and I, I mean, right to be concerned, in our practice, we're doing uh, some curbside visits. So we're doing a very similar thing. We're having owners pass, pass a dog to a leash, or sorry, on a leash to us outside. Uh, short answer is no. Like, there's there's been a lot of tests that have come in showing that people can pass the infection to pets. Um, right now, dogs don't seem to get sick from it. Cats can get some mild illness. But there haven't been any cases where a pet has transmitted it back to a person that, that anybody, I think, in the world is aware of right now. So uh, really not a concern. Could, could a pet act as um, a fomite, you know, the same way a, a doorknob might? Could it have virus on its fur and, and pass it that way? It's, it's super, super unlikely, but obviously you do want to practice um, good hand hygiene, sanitizing tools in between patients, things like that to minimize the risk. Okay, up right. next we've got a caller on the line. Robin, good morning. What is your question for the good Dr. Massa? Hi, how are you? We're well. How are you good. doing? Good, how are you? I'm all right. My question is, my dog has been sneezing, and I'm wondering if it has to do with the COVID-19. Oh. So I, I suspect not. Uh, as I just mentioned, like the, in terms of the dogs that have been shown to have positive test results for COVID-19, none of them have really displayed any signs of associated illness. So there, there are a lot of other causes uh, that could relate to, to sneezing. Uh, certainly this time of year, allergies is a big one. So that might be something that I would uh, explore first. And uh, good news. I, I beg your pardon? What about cats? Can cats get it too? So cats can be affected by COVID-19. So far, um, the cases that we've seen, the signs have been very mild, but upper respiratory signs like sneezing, coughing, uh, even some mild vomiting and diarrhea have, have been noted. So that's possible, um, but we haven't seen the same in dogs. If it is allergies, what does one do? I'm curious. Yeah, so I guess that's that's just one possibility. I mean, there's other things you might want to look at as well. Uh, certainly, there are allergy medications that can be used. Um, certainly, calling your vet to, to talk about which medication, what dose is best for your pet is a good idea. Um, you know, the good news is if it's fairly mild, um, often you don't have to do anything. Uh, you know, if this is something that's come up and is kind of, uh, you know, mild and, and doesn't last very long, you may just want to wait it out. But if it's uh, getting serious, certainly if your dog is having uh, discharge, you know, anything coming out of its nose, uh, I would certainly contact a veterinarian to, to get into specifics. Okay, thanks. And right. thanks, Robin, for the call. We've got another email. Yeah, this one's coming from Murray. Huh? Murray says, I have a small dog. He is 12 years old. He's developed a limp. I was wondering if CBD oil is an option for treating joint pain in a dog. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, and that's one that comes up more and more, especially with the changes in Canada with regards to cannabis products. Right now, veterinarians aren't legally allowed to prescribe CBD. Basically, there's no um, 
approved veterinary products and it really hasn't been tested in pets. So I think there are probably some other options you could explore first. Um, you know, there are both some pharmaceuticals and some other uh, supplements, things like uh, omega fatty acids or fish oil, glucosamine, chondroitin, that have been proven to be safe in pets and, and to have good effects. So I would probably look at those other options first. Um, you may want to speak to your veterinarian directly about CBD as kind of a, a last resort. There are some cases where I've seen it used in elderly pets in palliative care settings. Um, but again, it is fairly untested at this point. Okay, up next, we've got a phone call from Tammy. Good morning, Tammy. What is your question for doctor? Oh, hi, good morning. Good morning, how hi. are you? Oh, not bad, thanks. Um, I have a quick question. So I have two dogs. One is young. Okay. He's two years old. His name is Zeus. And okay. a 14-year-old, his name is Quincy. So we, okay. give, we give the boys equal treats and equal toys, but the young one takes them all. So okay. is there something I can do to stop that from happening? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure if you're talking about just treats or regular meals, but... Um, no, treats. You, meals, he's good. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry, treats okay. only. Meals, they're fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I, I think the best thing to do is to work on, uh, you know, just some, some basic obedience, right? And I, I'm sure you guys have done lots of training already, but, um, you know, if you could work on a... If, if you could work on a really good just uh, kind of sit, down, stay command, you may be able to get Zeus to kind of wait patiently while you do give uh, a few treats to the older guy and kind of give them both a fair opportunity. So that would be my my best advice. Certainly the training is a, a process, right? It takes a little bit right. of time, lots of uh, repetition, positive reinforcement, that kind of stuff. Okay. Thank good you. luck, Tammy. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, another okay. question, doctor. I, uh, what about the fact that uh, there's, this is interesting. My dog is loving the fact that we're home all the time. Will she go through separation anxiety once things return to normal? Should we try leaving her alone sometimes to get her used to it again? That's from Emily. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, and um, I mean, I, I think that's a valid concern. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes in terms of everybody's lifestyle, and pets are not always great with change. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that most pets, this won't be an issue when things kind of start to get back to normal, especially if it happens in a more gradual fashion. But if your pet is, let's say, um, you know, a rescue pet, if they already have some anxiety or separation anxiety issues, um, certainly it could be exacerbated. Uh, doing little practice walks, I think, would be a good idea, right? So maybe uh, right now, uh, just going out for a walk for 10 or 20 minutes, uh, leaving her there at home and uh, making sure she's okay with those kinds of circumstances before things really start to progress. You and doctor, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. There's one from Todd too. My yeah. dog needs to update his rabies vaccine. Should pet owners still be taking their pets to non-emergency exams for shot updates, physicals, etc.? Yeah, so right now, uh, because the government is only allowing essential services to operate, I realize that's starting to change uh, as of this week, but veterinarians are only allowed to administer urgent care. And for the most part, things like regular checkups and vaccines have not been deemed urgent care. Uh, with regards to rabies, because that's a, a human health issue as well, um, that can be an exception. But a dog who, you know, if, if his rabies vaccine was due on you know, May 1st, it's not like he's immune on uh, May 1st and on May 2nd, he's got no immunity. There actually is a little bit of a grace period there. So deferring for a month or two, I don't think is the end of the world, but if your pet's sick, certainly call your veterinarian. If you need things like flea, tick, heartworm medication, uh, there are ways that we can administer care and even dispense medication uh, using things like telemedicine, so. Doctor, we do have to wrap up, but before we go, we have about 15 seconds for this. Um... Can I pet someone else's dog if I'm at the dog park? That's a lot of questions we're getting from people. Yeah, so in, in a lot of cases, we're recommending to try and socially distance your pets, just like you're socially distancing yourself. Again, I, I think COVID-19 is really exclusively or almost exclusively a pet that's spread from person to person, but is there some small risk that a dog could have it on its fur? It's possible. So, um, you know, trying to keep your pets with your family unit, I think, is the best plan. But um, I realize it's, it's a challenging thing to do, right, especially at the park when your dog's running off leash. So. Yeah, it's so true. Amazing. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much for yep. taking the time yeah. this morning, and you answered a lot of great questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Stay I appreciate safe. it. Thank you. Coming up